guys welcome back to my channel this is Alejandra once again I'm really happy to have you here one more week with me and uh, today I actually wanted to tell you guys a story about my first time in the US and my first impressions when I got there um, as well as just some other fun facts about that trip that I actually made a couple years ago if this is your first time in my channel, you probably don't know that I am Spanish. I actually always wanted to travel to the US, but I never really had the opportunity to do so. Um, and obviously I learned the language and I always was looking for opportunities to expose myself to it and to really perfect it and just become really proficient in it mostly because I wanted to and I also had like really good opportunities work-wise because of my English so I'm really thankful for that but um, my first time in the US is actually in 2016 and I actually had two reasons why the first one was because I had a wedding in Florida one of my best friends was getting married and she is from Florida and so she asked me to be one of her bridesmaids which I was really grateful for and uh, the second and incredibly important reason was because I was going to meet my husband's, my now husband's family. Uh, my husband's American, but back then in 2016, we were still boyfriend and girlfriend, but I totally knew that he was the one. Um, even though he hadn't proposed yet, he, he knew that I was the one for him and I knew that he was the one for me. And he of course wanted if I was going to be in the U.S., obviously I wanted to go to where he was from. He's from Kentucky and eventually I was able to meet his family and it was amazing but I'll tell you more details about it in a minute. So let's get started with my first impressions when I got to the U.S. Well, first of all, I have to confess that I had the expectation that I was going to be speaking English all the time and it was partly true when I actually traveled there, but at first when I got there, because I went to Florida, there's a very large Spanish speaking population there. And I was greatly surprised because I did not speak a word of English. So that was my first, you know, encounter with the United States, which was that I thought I was gonna speak English, but I did not, I actually spoke Spanish a lot. Um, once I arrived at the airport in Florida and it was interesting because it just made me realize how big the United States are and how little we actually know um, because obviously we see a lot of things in the news about the US or when we travel and we just try to do research and stuff but once you get once you get there for the first time you just kind of realize that each state is almost like its own country and that's what happened to me when I got to Florida. Everyone was speaking Spanish to me even though I politely tried speaking English because that's what I thought I was going to do and obviously I am in a different country and I want to be as you know accommodating to the culture as possible so I that's what I thought I thought I was going to speak English but in the end I ended up speaking a lot of Spanish uh, which was great because thankfully I do speak Spanish so um, that was really good um, and then my second impression was that everything was huge the cars the drinks when you would go out to the restaurant or something and the small size glass is just actually huge and it just that that was my first impression that everything is just huge everything is big because i don't know if you guys know but here in spain well i think just in europe in general things are just much smaller not in a bad way but it's just like we don't necessarily require as big of a space or just things in general um and that was my first impression. My third impression was that everything was literally like in the movies. I <laughs> so I had actually grown up watching American movies. I feel like everyone else, but my, my third impression was just like, wow, like things are literally like in the movies. Like, I just feel like I have been here before, but I actually haven't and this is my first time. So that was actually really cool for me because it was, it was honestly a dream come true to actually being able to travel to the US and just seeing how the houses were and just how people interacted with each other and things like that. So that was definitely super cool. 
So that was actually just my first time in Florida. Um, I actually was in Miami for a couple of days and then um, the wedding was actually gonna be in Tallahassee, which is in the north of Florida. And I loved it, I think it was beautiful. The just the space and the wedding itself was absolutely gorgeous. And I was very happy that I was able to be a part of my friend's wedding. Um, but something that I also felt in terms of English is that I did not think that I was going to get nervous when speaking English in the US, but for some reason I really did get nervous. Not in a bad way, but more like, wow, like I realized that in Spain I had always spoken English as my second language. And so when I would receive people over to my country and I would show them around or things like that, like I somehow knew that I was in control because it was like, whatever would happen, like I knew I was in my country and I knew that I was going to be, you know, just the one kind of being the mediator between foreigners or, well, foreigners and people here in Spain. Um, and so being in a different country and having to speak English was actually a great experience for me, not necessarily because I was learning new things. I mean, obviously I was learning vocabulary and things like that, but in general, I didn't need to learn more English, but it was just the feeling of, wow, I'm not in my country. I am not necessarily as in control as I usually am in Spain. And so that was really interesting for me. Um, and it really helped my confidence. Just in general, it really helped further my confidence in English because I realized that if I am actually able to master English, not just outside of an English-speaking country, but also in the US, in an English-speaking country, then I actually was good. I was really good. I just really loved that experience. As I was mentioning earlier, I had the opportunity to meet my husband's family. Um, like I said back then, we were still boyfriend and girlfriend and it was a very important moment for me because I was going to be meeting my future husband's family and um, what I really liked about the experience was that I could see how different the states were. I mean, obviously I didn't visit all the states, but I was able to see the difference in, in cultures that you could see. And so being in Florida and then going to Kentucky, which is where my husband's from, was very different. And when I went to Kentucky, nobody spoke Spanish at all. And so I was able to obviously speak English, but once once there, once I was there, I was so incredibly grateful that I could speak English because I realized how important communicating with people is and how important it was for me to communicate with my future husband's family because it's not until you're actually in the situation where you have to communicate that you realize how important it is, how much you convey through language, how much you get to know somebody through communicating and talking and telling stories and introducing yourself and just little things like that that just add up and are so, so important. And just being in Kentucky and being able to communicate completely, you know, freely and not having any communication problems was a huge step for me. And it made me realize how grateful I was for having learned English much earlier and also just exposing myself to the language in Spain as much as possible so it was also great uh, to help me practice for that specific moment. So. It was great. It was honestly great. It could have not been better. Um, and obviously later, uh, my then boyfriend and I were able to get married and just build a stronger relationship with his family as well. And so it was, it was incredible. And if you are watching this video, I highly recommend that you continue to improve your English. If you are wanting to do other things in different countries or just simply communicating with different people because trust me, communicating well and with clarity and with confidence not only gives you more confidence but it also helps you to achieve whatever you want to achieve and in my case I wanted to have a stronger relationship with my husband's family and also building new relationships and obviously with my husband he's American and he speaks Spanish but uh, at home we speak English just because 
that was the language that we first spoke when we met. Uh, we actually met in 2015 and that was just the language that we spoke and it's kind of weird when you try to speak a different language with somebody that you already do in a different language. I don't know if that makes sense. Um, but, but yeah, so I highly, highly recommend improving your English uh, as much as possible just because you don't know what the future holds. And then another thing that I wanted to mention that I was that was very shocking for me was how many deer there were. And I mean, I don't know where you're from, but where I'm from, you only see dogs, not necessarily deer, just hanging out in people's backyards and just walking around and for me it was a shock. And I actually loved it. And I don't know, I just really fell in love with with that because they were just so cute and I love Bambi. I don't know if you've ever seen that movie, but it was really a shock for me to see deer just walking around just like nothing, like everything is fine. So that was another thing if you ever go to the States, well, I don't know any other States, but where I was, there were just so many deer and I loved it. And so if there's something that I want you to get out of this video is that you don't have to go to a different country to learn a language. That is a lie, that is a myth. Um, it's just not true because I realized that my time learning English in Spain improved my accent, my pronunciation, my confidence was key for me to be able to actually go to the States and communicate freely and not having to worry about, you know, people understanding me or being clear. Um, so that was just incredibly cool. So you don't need to go to a different country to learn and improve your, your English confidence. The second thing that I want you to know is that it is great. It is great when you're able to go to a different country and communicate and relate with people because you don't just learn English for the sake of learning English. I mean, you can if you want to, of course, but you don't just do that. You do it for a reason, whether you want to have more job opportunities or you want to be able to build more relationships or you want to be able to just simply talk to other people about specific topics. Like you're always, there's always a reason behind or just you just simply love it, you know, and that's what you want to do. But honestly, it, it, it's something that I highly recommend that you practice always like every single day you know you don't have to be doing a lot every day you just have to do a little bit every single day because when the time comes where you actually have to travel well obviously right now in 2020 it's a little hard to travel but <laughs> once you're actually able to to experience those things that you're wanting to experience in different countries then you're gonna be so glad that you learned the language and that you took the time to improve and just you know be able to to communicate really effectively with no problems themselves what i experienced definitely was learning different things about the culture new words new vocabulary because obviously you know, you're always learning new things. And to, to this day, like I'm still learning new things, phrasal verbs, locations, idioms, things that they just use as native speakers. But I love it because it's just a never ending process, basically. There's something that you do achieve, which is, especially when it comes to grammar, like you just learn the grammar and learn how to use the tenses and different structures and some, you know, basic vocabulary, absolutely. But when it comes to just other things, like you just learn them and you learn them on the way and you don't have to have any perfect accent or any perfect mastery of English. It's just something that you, continue to improve every single day. Even in Spanish, I mean, I am Spanish, I'm a native Spanish speaker, and I don't know all the words, and sometimes there are words in Spanish that I don't know and that I learn, but I still speak Spanish, right? So, basically what I want you to learn from this is that it is possible that you should totally continue to invest a little bit of time every single day to improve your confidence, your, your pronunciation, your clarity, your delivery, absolutely. Because when the time comes where you have to actually like travel or do other things, you're gonna be glad you did invest that time. So I hope this was fun for you guys to watch and to learn a little bit and I hope you have a fantastic week.